I'm just gonna ask you all to just please gloss over the fact that it's been about six months since my last video, and let's just pretend that highs never happened and enjoy a nice chill chat about this past year's planners and journals with me. Happy 2022 everyone! It's Brina and welcome or welcome back to another video. I hope you all had a fantastic holiday season and it's a new year, which you know what that means. It's time to bust out all of those new plans and journals that we've worked so hard to set up over the fall and winter time, but that's not what this video is about. I will be covering my 2022 planner and journal setup in another video later on, but I am a little late because ironically I didn't plan this well. We are off to a great start this year, aren't we? So instead we are going to be reviewing slash looking back on all the planners and journals that I used over 2021 and how all these notebooks worked or didn't work for me, how my needs changed throughout the year and how I adapted as such, and also what I wish I could have done differently. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I'm going to explain how I went from this stack of notebooks here to this even bigger stack of notebooks here. Um, yeah, so I really hope this video isn't going to be too long. We have a lot of notebooks to cover. So enough dilly-dallying and let's get into it, I guess. So I feel like the best place to start would be prefacing with the fact that at the start of the year, I really felt that I was like a one book for everything kind of person. The thought of juggling more than one planner felt very daunting and honestly unnecessary. <laughs> oh, how naive I was. I had very innocently believed that the best option for me would be to get one book that would be for, well, everything. And so we start with the Hobonichi Cousin of Ek. And it was perfect in my mind because of all the different kinds of spreads that it had. I'll leave a link to my January flip through of this because that's where I went more into depth and explained how I used each section of it to plan, track, and journal my life at the time. But yeah, for a while, this book was like truly perfection. It was like my chubby little baby. <laughs> I wanted to be in this every day and flip through it every hour, and I just could not wait for each of my planning and journaling sessions. I just, I cannot stress how incredibly proud I was of this book while I was working in it. And then it like got to a point where I started thinking, um, this boy be getting kind of chunky. And and it doesn't really feel like a planner anymore. And then there was like this block where I felt like this book should really just be dedicated to journaling and I just couldn't find it in me to use it to plan anymore. On top of that, I started using Google calendars to time block my days so the vertical weekly wasn't as appealing at that point any longer. And I ended up craving something more organic and like a bullet journal or at least with like a horizontal weekly layout to just jot down events and tasks for my planning needs without feeling the need to track the time spent during my day. Also pretty early on, maybe around like like March or so, I fell into like a really big creative slump for a good chunk of the year. And while I did try to like occasionally do some catch up on my journaling, it did fall off quite a bit uh, midway through the year, as you could see. Most of these journal entries, I, you know, I did I did bother like filling out some of them here and there and like preparing them to like write in, but I never actually went back to write in them. But some of them I did, some of them I didn't. And it's like a very messy mismatch of finished slash unfinished entries. And like after this book, I just completely fell off the journaling wagon. And this was like the second book of the year from July to December. And as you can see, it like went very vastly unused. So to fill the planning hole left over from declaring my Hobonichi cousin as like a journal only book, I started using this Hobonichi A6 day free around mid-June and I used the yearly index to log and track my layouts and the monthlies went mostly unused but the notes pages were like exactly what I was looking for in terms of like kind of having something more freeform bullet journal like to just log my days and my tasks and events. But I kind of only ended up using it for like about a month or so leading up to our move but I did really enjoy it for the while that I wasn't it. Also during this time, I found a lot of joy in like stream of consciousness writing and also practicing my cursive handwriting. So this B6 Stology was left over from when I did my bullet journaling in 2020 and I had quite a large chunk of it like kind of left unused. So I started just using it to do like longhand journal entries, just like stream of consciousness and like practicing handwriting, just writing nonsense, kind of scream, write all of my thoughts onto paper, both good and bad. And chances are no entries will ever be reread and they're probably very incomprehensible anyway. <laughs> And now we approach the second half of 2021, where for lack of a better explanation, it was kind of like a 
Sheik Sparrow explosion of sorts. <laughs> I really don't know what happened. I caught a bug or something and it made me go into like a manic state and just buy leather covers at a rate that I've never done before. I'm also a little embarrassed to say that this isn't even the whole collection of Sheik Sparrows that I currently have now. It's just the ones relevant for the topic of this video. So if you guys want a Sheik Sparrow collection video, let me know in the comments. So one of the first things we're gonna talk about is uh, these guys. One of the first things I realized after moving was that while the daily logging and the day free Hobonichi worked well for me during during like that weird limbo period we had while we were buying and closing on our home. After the move, I needed something with like a lot more structure. I didn't want to worry about like creating weekly layouts every single week, but I also needed like defined spaces for my task. And I didn't want to return to the cousin because of all the same reasons. Plus with all like the shopping and being out and about that we were doing to like set up our home, I needed something small and portable. So that's when I got the idea to try something that I had once told myself that I would never try again, which is a Hobonichi Weeks. I mean, <laughs> Never say never, right? I decided to like dig out this old weeks. Yeah, I had tried this out in like 2017 and I had abandoned it like very early on, barely a month in. Uh, but I decided to see if I would enjoy it now. I had taken it out and I decided to start redating it with some correction tape to see if this would work for me. And this like, it honestly answered all of my needs and I totally get it now. I mean, it took me four years, but I got there, don't worry. I'm like all aboard the Hobonichi Weeks hype train now. For the Hobonichi two weeks, I had gotten the Chic Sparrow personal size traveler's notebook in their creme brulee leather. And I guess here's like a sneak peek from something of my 2022 lineup. It's this, uh, what do they call it? The doggy and pussycat Hobonichi weeks. The weeks fits perfectly like flush edge to edge on the top and bottom uh, without any like clear cover on it. And I don't mind that it's a bit on the skinnier side for like an insert for the personal size because that lets me put in like two pens all at once and it kind of sits like really nicely in there. And then on the other strings, I have two B6 Slim Midori MD Light notebook. One is a work log that holds like notes and tasks and things to follow up on pertaining to my job. And then the other one is just a non-purpose notebook, sketchbook, journal, cause the Midori MD paper is my absolute favorite. So I always just keep like a surplus of them kind of like everywhere and in everything now. And this has been my planning system from when I set it back up in August with redating this 2017 weeks to getting my new one. And it's been working really, really well. I mean, I feel like I might move some things around now that I have have a new week, but I guess I'll cover all that in my 22 lineup video later on, so stay tuned. Now this teeny tiny little cutie is a Chic Sparrow pocket chamomile traveler's notebook and in it a, I have like a, I think it's called a Fabriano pocket notebook that I use as like a currently ink fountain pen log. And then I also have an A6 Sploitch term. I mean, really it's actually like an A6 Slim, but they just don't label it as such. I started using this soon after the move as well because I wanted to try like that morning pages habit where you just kind of write like maybe like a, a total of like three pages, just writing anything and everything that comes down to mind, just like a brain dump of stream of consciousness writing um, like I was doing in my stylogy earlier in the year um, except it was like purposeful like I was doing this not just to practice my handwriting but to like empty my head every morning and I loved it. First off this tiny notebook is so adorably small so doing like three-ish pages takes about like 15 to 20 minutes in the morning. Extremely doable and this yellow is so cute. I just get all the good vibes when I hold the setup in my hand and when I had started this habit in the late summer slash early fall the weather was amazing Amazing. So I just felt very, I don't know, like I could pretend to be some hoe who's just got their shit together because I would just have my morning coffee or tea out on her deck on beautiful sunny early mornings while writing my morning pages. I was like a friggin' main character out of a book or something and I was really thinking, damn, who is this bitch who's got it all figured out right now? And that's just the vibe that daily morning journaling gives me. Nowadays I had to stop keeping up with it on the daily and I just try to do it when I can now, which isn't as often as I would like, but I would like to remedy that in 2022 and hopefully re-achieve that main character status that I held so briefly at the end of this past summer, but we'll see. Alright, next up. Obviously, after getting our first home, I very quickly felt the need to have like a dedicated home planner slash log slash journal. I had chosen this Chic Sparrow wide size traveler's notebook in their Austin Emma leather because I had always heard so many good things about how this leather wears and patinas and I kind of had this romantic idea that getting this cover for our home log would feel like this journal would age and grow with us and our home, you know? So 
in it, I have a moleskin cahier from my college days. And I had just like lopped off all the used pages. And I just started using it as like our household budget book and expense tracker. Um, yeah, and I have a color coding system in it. I just do this about once a month if I'm feeling lazy or like twice a month if I'm like actually on top of my shit. And I'll just sit down and go through all of our expenses and bills and receipts and log them just to make sure we're on track with our finances. I also have some charts in here that I've drafted with some budget for household projects that I want to tackle. And then maybe most importantly, I have an 18 month moleskin planner that I'm using as our like family calendar and home log. And this is just to like track appointments and paste in receipts and log any home maintenance that we have done or need to do so we can like make sure that we're getting everything. I don't know. What's the word? Um, maintenance service for our home on like the regular schedule that it needs to be. I'm not going to lie. I'm like a little regretty spaghetti on deciding to go for the moleskin planner and notebook because this paper sucks ass. Everything seems to bleed on this godforsaken planner, but you know what? We've committed and I guess we're just gonna keep going with it, so it's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, now we're getting into something that I am so excited to have started doing this year and I've tried so hard to be kind of chill about it on Instagram and whatnot, but if I'm being honest, this literally like took over my life so hard starting in like mid-August and I present to you my tarot journal. Yes, I took up tarot reading this year and I have been wanting to do it for so long. I actually had a tarot deck growing up as a kid, but that's like another story for another day. But yeah, so this past August I picked up my first tarot deck since misplacing my childhood one and oh me oh my I fell so deep into a rabbit hole of tarot and oracle and divination that I could probably go on for hours about it. It's mainly been like a self-reflection or intention slash goal setting practice in essence but I've also done a few like um divinatory readings for friends and for myself occasionally so I guess that makes me like the official designated tarot astrology ho of our friend group but okay that's enough on that I'll hold back and chill because that's not what this video is about. I am very proud of this journal so far. I am currently using a B6 number seven Chic Sparrow in their Waypoint Coil Leather, and I am journaling my readings in a B6 Stalogy. But yeah, I, I love this journal and I love all the, the readings and all the things that I've been learning about tarot um, over these last few months. And my tarot collection has kind of grown at quite an alarming rate over the last few months. So that's my tarot journal in this B6 Stalogy. And then I also have these two inserts from Paper Penguin Co. that I plan to use to do in-depth studies of a couple decks that I have but I just haven't gotten around to them um, as of yet. That's just honestly just been like such a happy place for me since I started this in August all the way up until now. Um, this obsession runs so deep that I'll probably end up doing like a video or two on tarot cards, like my current deck collection or like maybe a tarot journal with me. I don't know. I'm not even gonna ask you guys to comment if you're interested or not because even if you aren't, I don't care. <laughs> when it comes to this particular topic, I'm gonna do what I want and none of y'all can stop me. And then to sort of build on the tarot practice that I picked up, um, for lack of a better way to describe this journal, I guess it can be classified as like a spiritual journal question mark. This is a chic sparrow personal size um, in their Callahan Harry leather. And in this, I have three B6 Slim Midori MD inserts. So two of them are the light notebooks. One is blank and one is gridded. And then I have like one of their uh, thick boy notebooks books. And basically I've just been using this notebook to journal like monthly intentions in conjunction with like the moon faces and note down correspondences of stuff like crystals and plants and make observations of, I don't know, I feel a little weird talking about like my spirituality in like a serious way. So I'm just going to call it like cosmic woo woo shit and leave it at that. Um, maybe one day I'll be more comfortable talking about it, but today is not that day and that is okay. Okay, final stretch. We have one more book to talk about. And if you are still here, thank you so much for sticking around. And hey, if you are still here, I hope you are enjoying this video enough to have been watching this long. So please give it a like if you're so inclined. Uh, maybe subscribe if you want to see me chat more about notebooks, planners, and journaling, and art. And then also maybe shove some tarot journaling content down your throats against your will. I don't know. But anyways, last and certainly not least is the Strawberry Biscuit cover from Hobonichi. Um, it's currently housing my A5 Midori 
and the cotton sketchbook and I'll talk more about the sketchbook and why I have been in it since 2017. If I ever manage to finish it and actually do a sketchbook flip I'll talk about I'll talk about all that but for now I'll just talk about um, my use of it for just this year alone. I've like been really lacking on traditional sketching for a long time. You could say years as evidenced by the fact that I've had the sketchbook since 2017 and it's still not done but this year I'm really making an effort to try and pick up my sketchbook more and part of what has really made me fall in love with sketching again is these three pens. Um, I cannot say enough good things about these Sailor Fude fountain pens. They're basically like my absolute favorite sketching tool and they've actually made me really enjoy sketching even more now as a mainly digital artist than I did back when I used to sketch and draw traditionally like every day. And yeah, so the sketchbook this year has been like a great source of like stretching my creative muscles and doing artistic explorations in a way that I haven't really indulged in in a long time. And I also like include like a few snapshots of my life and what's going on in my head at the time of drawing because I'll just like write random notes around all of my sketches. So I love that it's like a sketchbook, but it's also kind of like a little bit of a journal in that way as well. And that is finally every planner and journal that I've used over this last year. Did I do anything consistently? No. And I think if there's one thing that I regret that I wish I could have done differently, it's that I wish I could have kept up some form of creative journaling throughout the whole entire year because the finished pages in my Hobonichi Cousin from my daily journaling earlier this year are my favorite things to look back on ever. And I'm so sad that I don't really have that for like the rest of the year, but I'm not going to beat myself up over it. I acknowledge that I'm still experimenting and finding my footing with building a journaling habit and that's okay. I'll get there someday. And like I said, I do have a 2022 lineup video slash Techo Kaiji on the back burner to film and upload, but unfortunately I won't be able to get to that until around mid-January, so be on the lookout for that. Until then, I guess have a happy new year and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!